Hello and welcome back for another squad cast on this happy Monday. I feel like everyone always has a negative connotation to Mondays. And although I may be tired because I've been gaming all weekend, it's a good day to start the week. So happy Monday, everybody. Today I am joined with Caboose. We have Malik and Ophelia joining me. I'm Camille, your host, one of your hosts for today. And we're going to be covering um, a plethora of topics ranging from, of course, comic book stuff because we have Caboose here. <laughs> <laughs> Latest games uh, that are out right now that you could play. And of course, esports. So more specifically, we're going to be talking about Watch Dogs Legion and the innovation in that game and game development as a whole. Uh, Cloud9's mm -hmm. all-female Valorant team and women in esports. And uh, we got Square Enix Final Fantasy 16 reveal for PS5. I'm interested about this one, Ophelia, because I don't think I'm sold yet. Awesome. And we're going to end. We'll see. We'll see. And we're going to end I'm it so off. Hyped. With <laughs> We're going to end it off with Spider-Verse suit uh, in Spider-Man Miles Morales. And the hype is intensified, intensifying because, well, it's just around the corner. Uh, remember, yeah. chat, as we discuss, make sure your voice is heard in the chat. Clip things if they're funny. If you want to sound off on it on our socials, you can find us at Squad State. All right, let's hop right into it because uh, I feel like a lot of these topics are going to take up a lot of time. So let's get the ball rolling. I, I want a hands up. Who's who actually played Watch Dogs this past weekend? It launched last week. Anyone? I Anyone? Watched, I watched, the, I watched a lot yet. of games, but I didn't play it. No. You watched a lot of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of animal pet streams. Watch my dog. Um, but pretty much, uh, Watch Dogs, it came out last week, and it was pretty hyped because of what the game is doing um, to kind of innovate game development. And I think this is something we don't talk about. Um, pretty much Watch Dogs is about you're, you're a hacker, specifically in Legion. You're in London, a part of DeadSec, which is a, like a huge um, hacking group. You guys are framed. Dead Tech is framed for a terrorist attack, and you're trying to clear their name uh, through like using all these different hacking tools. Pretty much, it's like the coolest way to live life in game. Mm -hmm. But what's groundbreaking about this is the fact that you're able to play as any character you see in the game. So a part of being a hacker is recruiting new hackers to your group in order to obviously gain more intel, get into um, secret areas. And you're able to do that by literally seeing anyone in the game and appealing to their storyline and trying to win them over to the side of DeadSec. From there, you could play as them. And it's not just that you're playing over a uh, skinned over character. You're actually taking the role of that character and the dialogue changes, um, the story changes um, accordingly, like they have different um, storylines. And it's just something that we haven't really seen at this large scale um, with a AAA title like this, giving you that much freedom to play. So I'm wondering for you guys, like, I know you guys didn't play the game, but did that appeal to you at all in terms of how the game was advertised or what was it about it that like really makes you think this may actually change how game development go for going forward? I'll just say as a general note that like Watch Dogs as a franchise had no business succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> like after the first game and kind of the disaster around the the downgrade and and all like the conversation that came from Watch Dogs one and then the fact that it came out and it was fairly underwhelming. The fact that Ubisoft was like, no, we have good ideas here. We have a cool foundation for a concept for a game. We're going to stick with this. And now here we are with Watch Dogs Legion, where you can play as like 50 different characters that yes. are all unique from one another mm -hmm. and have specific move sets. That's so cool. And and I agree. I think it's definitely a step in a, in the right direction. Well, I mean, not that it would go in the wrong direction, but <laughs> it's 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 a step in a direction that I am intrigued in for game development, and especially yeah. Yeah. with next gen being right around the corner. As the years go by, as games start becoming next gen only, and not you know creating games for the PS4, or the Xbox One, to see how they fully utilize the power of next gen will be really intriguing. You know, I wonder 
what a what a Watch Dogs Legion could be if it was yeah. exclusively made for the next gen platforms. You know, right. you could have who knows how many different characters playable, right? Yeah. Uh, so so I, I like it. It looks cool. I am looking forward to playing it. I have it. I will play it eventually. Um, but yeah, I, I like I like where this is going. I think it's also too because uh, I was I haven't played it yet, but I was watching a GTA streamer play it over the weekend. And he kind of brought up this aspect of with these open world games, mm -hmm. more often than not, like GTA and Watch Dogs and Sleeping Dogs and all the other, all the other games. All the games. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have a tendency to hit, kill, maim, injure the civilians of the world. When any one of those people, any one of those NPCs could be a playable character that could change how you play the game, it kind of shifts that mentality. And mm -hmm. I think that Ubisoft being able to subtly do that to subtly make people think about before they drive a car you know through the middle of a crowd they think you know that could be somebody that i recruit and that for me is the really cool interesting part of Watch Dogs. and also too the game just looks beautiful like yeah. it is absolute gorgeous the fine detail that they put into the game i've heard a lot of issues with uh frames like people are yeah. losing frames when driving through the city but when you stop and look at the city like when you're just standing the detail it seems incredible so far so i'm excited because like you said Watch Dogs had no business being <laughs> this good the first i played the first and the second game and the first one was cool mechanics mechanics bland story same yes. game was really cool story same old mechanics yes. this time it seems like they're finally starting to make a little bit of improvement i was worried because when they said they were bringing back aiden pierce i was like great we get the generic white guy of the series <laughs> but from what i've seen it seems like the cast ensemble is pretty good well, on top of that, didn't they say they're adding like a modern day assassin from Assassin's Creed? Yeah, Ezio yes. is like coming back. It's, That's it's like so a, it's like cool. A Ezio descendant. Yeah, That's Ubisoft really never cool. disappoints. Yeah, yeah, I think we can believe in Ubisoft because they proved with Assassin's Creed that even when they failed, they always get up because mm -hmm. yeah. well, we won't talk about Unity, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Wow. They're used to messing up, and then they just give you caviar, you know? And I feel like there's endless possibilities. And if today we have one studio ready to push back the barriers of AA titles, I think it might be Ubisoft. So, mm -hmm. yay. Yeah. French yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, yay, French crew. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you there. Like, I feel like Watch Dogs really didn't have any place in being a successful franchise because yeah. I think um, with the first game, like Malik, you mentioned, it was really cool, the mechanics of hacking, because we really haven't seen that utilized in any other game. But then when they came out with a sequel, yeah, well, but when you, <laughs> they came out in the sequel, you wanted that to just be built on to even make it better. But because the mechanics, they didn't really do anything to improve that here, there, you didn't get that. So with this, it's, it's crazy just the amount of time that the studio has put into making sure that it feels like you're playing as a different person. This kind of gives me the vibes of uh, we, you, remember Zombie You? When you oh, yeah. die, permadeath, yeah. you play as another character, but it literally is a skin. It, it feels like the same person you're playing as. When you're playing Watch Dogs, you either have, like, have a different accent, like just the way that the character moves. They actually captured their actors moving as different characters each time. They recaptured mm, it each time and time again. So it's like, imagine shooting one, like through one actor playing through as one character and then having to do that 50 times over. It's a lot of work. And I think when we usually look at games like Caboose, you mentioned that, or sorry, Malik, you mentioned that it's beautiful. Like it does have its hiccups. Mm -hmm. I think when we think of next gen and we think of the capabilities of what we want of gaming in the future, we're often looking to the visuals. But I do like the fact that with Watch Dogs Legion, you're able to actually get something different that could really change how we look at open world games. Yes, yeah. and and not to not to always bring it back to something like geek culture related, but I'm thinking <laughs> about a game like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League yeah. where that is going to be a mm -hmm. truly straight up next gen game, not going to be on current gen consoles. And they've mentioned that one of the gameplay mechanics is the ability to switch if you're playing solo the ability mm -hmm. to switch between all four characters on the fly. And so imagine if 
you're playing as dead shot and Harley Quinn's halfway across Metropolis and mm-hmm. you snap of the finger, switch characters and you're ripped across the city playing as Harley Quinn. Now, you know, that would be mm-hmm. awesome. That could be a really fun mechanic. And again, that's something that can be done with the power mm-hmm. of next gen, with the SSDs, with the yeah. ability to just, you know, remove loading time altogether. Uh, so I- I'm looking forward to the direction that we're going in. This is, I feel the first time, in any upgrade of consoles where there is truly a full top to bottom upgrade, at least specifically between the 360 to like the PS4 or like yeah. uh, Xbox One era. Um, like obviously we got the fidelity upgrade, you know, there's there's some, like obviously there was bigger games, huge yeah. exclusives, but with SSDs and, and all the hardware being put into the uh, Series X into the PlayStation 5, this feels like a real significant upgrade that we're going to be getting. Yes. Yeah. Neil, did you, what system did you play uh, Watch Dogs on? Mm, so I played it. Okay. <laughs> I can't <laughs> talk about. Uh, well, I guess oh. I, yeah. Okay. So I played on um, the Xbox Series X. Okay. As well as, um, as well as the Another Xbox. System? Like the, uh, no, no, no. As well, I, I wish. <laughs> as well <laughs> as um, the Xbox One. 1x so um in terms of seeing the different it, it's kind of hard uh because i can't really speak much about the xbox series x um gameplay but what i can say in terms of the xbox one is you you do get that sense like it, it, it there are there are hiccups right so um i feel like what next gen is gonna bring it's gonna smooth some of that out and I, it goes back to what caboose was saying in terms of having a true like he imagines what it would look like truly for next gen if it was just built yes, for next for gen. It, yeah. And I feel like if that were to happen, the game would have been so much more successful. And I think people would have been able to receive it better uh, just because the hiccups do take away from those moments. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Well, and I think too is one of the things that I noticed from what I was watching is, and a common trend with video games is to kind of uh, mask graphical uh, graphical issues, graphic issues. I'm having trouble speaking today, apparently. Uh, <laughs> masking that behind motion blur, and I yes. did see a lot of motion blur in Watch Dogs Legion, which I was really surprised about because I always turn motion blur off and crank up my frames if possible. So for it to not for it to be running from what i saw at 200 frames and not have motion blur and still look amazing i can only imagine if they were given the time to put this on next gen but Mm -hmm. we also have to take into account ubisoft can't make mistakes they are not they can't they're not like call of duty what happened in assassin's creed unity i think it was where they were in france (laughs) <laughs> Unity we Syndicate, don't, Nemo. Yeah, we, don't, we don't talk about. You got a that. list. Yeah, the, and the Ubisoft fan base has made it very clear that if a game is bad, they are not going to tolerate it at all. Yeah, they're it, very it, vocal. It'll be a dead title, exactly. Yeah. So Ubisoft isn't like Call of Duty Studios where they can just make mistakes and it doesn't matter because they can yeah. do it right the next time. They, yeah. If they are bringing something new, they have to nail it. And exactly. that kind of pressure, I think, is what like Ophelia said, is going to make Ubisoft a great studio long-term. I mean, mm-hmm. they already are a great they are. studio, yeah. but yeah, they, just, I feel they like, always walk on thin ice. Well, I feel like when Ubisoft like was first around, like Beyond Good and Evil, like I love that game so much. They were at Prince of Persia. Like they put out some really amazing titles. And when they became a huge studio um, that was AAA putting out titles multiple titles year after year, you did see the quality kind of go down with Unity and other Assassin's Creed that were just kind of felt like fillers. Mm -hmm. And when they did the reboot, uh, well, not reboot, I like to call it a reboot because it kind of refreshed or reinvigorated my love for Assassin's Creed with Origin. Um, Like that, that really, I think, was a a milestone for them because they, I think they realized where their future was going what they Mm -hmm. needed to do to please their fans and make them happy. And that brings me to, I know they have not talked about it in a really long time, but beyond good and evil too, okay? They Mm -hmm. have, like, the things that they want to do in that game, how how large it is. It is a pipe dream, but (laughs) I... 
I'm excited for it because it's not relying on things that we've already experienced, things that are already out there and that we've seen. And I think that's what the downfall was with some of those Assassin's Creed games. It just became too normalized that it was just the same thing time and time again. Mm -hmm. So I, I do appreciate that they're trying new things. When we'll be able to see Beyond Good and Evil 2, I don't know. But at least we do have Watchdog Legions. Right. Oh, sorry, Watch Dogs Legion uh, to help us through that. Um, my thing is, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here, as with Watch Dogs, you are playing as different characters throughout. Do you think if we see more games like this, you kind of um, erase the need for a really good protagonist? Depends. Uh, it depends on the game, because if you have a good story, I mean... That sec is a group, so it makes sense to recruit people and play right. different characters. But if you play like I don't know Spider Man, you can't like switch characters <laughs> mid game, otherwise yes. you will lose yes. the soul of the game. So I think it just depends on the game and the experience you want to have. Mm -hmm. and the I agree. I think o Ophelia is, is stating the factuals there, and that like a game like Watch Dogs Legion can afford to just have a good plot while mm -hmm. letting you play as whoever you want to play as, you know, having the multiple characters be the fun gameplay aspect. But yeah, if you're playing like Spider-Man, if you're playing Uncharted, that protagonist needs to be strong, you know? Mm -hmm. And I and think, so, yeah, go ahead. I think that some, I think that a developer, it's hard. I think someone like Bethesda could make an Elder Scrolls or a Fallout game using the same technology. No, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Amazing. Because if you if you took Elder Scrolls and maybe you weren't, you know, a super powerful adventurer, you were just a random person who has to mm -hmm. kind of gain these skills. I think there are a lot of, like you said, it depends on the characters, but it also depends on the world that they've built. And if mm -hmm. a world doesn't have enough lore and story and it doesn't feel alive, I think the best worlds that we've inhabited is if you die, the world goes on without you. Those kind of worlds mm -hmm. really make you feel like you're like you're there and you're involved. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to be very hit or miss. But you got to remember is the whole you know climbing to a checkpoint and unveiling the the map that kind of started with Far Cry and Assassin's Creed. There's been a lot of mechanics in Ubisoft games that have permeated through a lot of other titles. So I think that this could be a mechanic or there could be other mechanics in Watch Dogs Legion that come out that, you know, could kind of push forward gaming a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> are you guys the type of gamers that would have multiple save files? Cause my thing is I am a very story driven gamer. Like I love mm -hmm. uh, story driven games. I fall in love with protagonists. Like, head over heels, like sometimes too quickly, um, but <laughs> I'm that person. So when I build a character in whatever game it is, I am so attached to that character that if they die or they get caught or something happens, <laughs> I usually have backup save files. So I'm going to put the question to you guys. Are you guys that type of gamer or do you guys Next just emergent. like... No, really? The immersion if he, of it if all? He, if he dies, he dies. Simple. <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. Sometimes you just screw up and you need to get nope. him back. He's like, oh, and no, I didn't mean to do that. And that's life. <laughs> yeah. The best, the best part of Infamous Second Son was that if you messed up or you killed somebody, people remembered that. Like, you would be just oh. walking through the streets and people mm -hmm. would scream at you. I like that. Because then it, it makes, i not going to lie, with games like Infamous, I have done a completely evil playthrough and a completely good playthrough and then a normal playthrough. But if I'm just doing the story for the first time, just let it happen. Just see what happens, you know? Because then you kind of see how the story naturally kind of progresses, mm -hmm. the kind of options they have for you. But yeah, do you again, make yeah. a save file just in case? I'm Malik, I'm looking to you because I, mean, I feel I, like you do. I, I feel could, like you would. It depends. It, de <laughs> it really depends. I want to say, I'm going to have to say yes because I have. I knew you would. I, <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> I generally, I like to let it play out, but sometimes you really screw up and you got to yeah. have that backup. How about you, Ophelia? Yeah, I, once again, I, I feel like I'm always saying depends on the game, but I mean, it's real because. <laughs> Sometimes, like in Infamous, you just go on with your life, just like in Skyrim or other games like that. But if you play, I don't know, um, Until Dawn or something like that, and you just screw up and you do something you didn't want to do, 
then I don't want to live with the consequences. I didn't <laughs> meant to do that. Like, no, no. Quit the These game and launch it again. The consequences. <laughs> yeah, it's like more stressful when playing the game, but in a nice comforting way as well. It's this weird balance, but I do hope... Uh, we do see more of these mechan like this mechanic of being able to play as various characters and having that feel that you are playing as various characters mm -hmm. uh, in other games. Now, Malik, I noticed that you did mention um, Skyrim. Are there any other games, Caboose, Ophelia, uh, or Malik, that you want to add to that list that you would want to see really use this mechanic? Uh, <laughs> other than Suicide I Squad. Have one. <laughs> oh, no. Besides Suicide Squad, and like besides the games that are already coming out that I know will have a mechanic where you're playing as multiple characters and all that, um, in in Dreamland fantasy world where all is right and I get what I want, uh, I would want a Spider-Man two to be like straight up both the playable characters. You could switch between any Spider-Man at any time. Allow there to be some online co-op in there too. Mm -hmm. Um, so that that would be awesome. Like a full on open world New York with both Spider-Men together where you could be swinging around the city as one or the other yeah. on a moment's notice would be amazing. That would be really cool. Yeah. That's, is, that's the dream. <laughs> this, is, this is in no way confirmed. And I don't know. Have you guys watched the show, the boys on Amazon? Yeah. I yeah. I want a boys video game I, where you can just mm. go and choose random. You can have random supers throughout the world. I mean, it'd be, it's an amazing premise. The fact that anybody can be a superhero, but I yeah. can't think of any games really other than like a new Elder Scrolls. Ooh. What about the boys yeah. where there's two sides you could pick, you know, yeah. like be on the side of system. Really the oh, butcher. Like, cool. yeah. Or you could be on the, or you could be a part of the seven or something. You create I your own hero or something. That would be cool. It'd probably be like a superhero GTA because you could do anything yeah. you want. Yeah. No yeah. rules. <laughs> that would be sweet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, Ophelia, do you have anything to add there to that list? No. Actually, just like Malik said, I don't see any current video game that we have because we're so used to it. Like, I don't, even Skyrim, I don't see myself like, I'm the chosen one. I don't want to be the farmer <laughs> over there. I kill dragons, you know? So uh, I feel like the current games always focus on one or two key characters. So I can't think of one, even Spider-Man. I'm not completely sold, but I won't go there because Kaboot <laughs> is going to kill me if I say I anything know, yeah. Spider-Man. <laughs> But, yeah, he's I'm giving crazy. you the eyes. He's giving you the crazy eyes. Yeah, I'm crazy. Like, oh, <laughs> um, no, I, I would actually, I, another Ubisoft title, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Whenever they want to talk about that game, I hope they do announce some sort of mechanic like this. Although they haven't really revealed much about the story where it will land um, Jade if she's back. Like all that stuff, right? Uh, I would just love in terms of that pipe dream that they have that is beyond good and evil too and fulfilling on like everything we would not expect um from mm -hmm. a game like that so that's where my dreams are gonna land i think we'll have to wait a few years to see if our dreams get uh <laughs> get uh, manifested or manifested into something actual uh but i think where we're going with this is in particular is just really pushing the boundaries of game development and also pressuring other studios in a way to step up and not just rely on the visuals and the old traditional yeah, mechanics yeah. of an open world. And we've reached, I think we've reached a point on visuals, like what more can you do than the realistic graphics? Exactly. Like, yeah. You exactly. need to step up some, you need to do something different. I mean, I don't mind a game with bad graphics if the experience is over the top. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I don't really care about if I can see each piece of hair on someone. I just want a good story. I just want to like feel immersed in it. Mm -hmm. And about that, a game that was good but not exactly the same was A Way Out. Mm. I don't know if you played mm. it. Yes, yes. Yeah. A Way Out is amazing. It's a co-op game, but the transitions between both gameplays, cinematics, and the way cameras moving, if you can get that even in a solo game, that would be dope. Yeah, you're you're absolutely yeah. right. Some of my favorite games are are like Borderlands, not yes. not even by oh a long God. shot. Mm -hmm. The one of the greatest looking games, but it has <laughs> its own visual style. And ninety nine percent of what you're gonna get out of your enjoyment from the game 
is from the story, especially in Borderlands 2, the story and the gameplay. Like yeah. that game, it relies on just being fun to play. And a lot of games just need to be that. Listen, we want like some people want their games to look pretty, no doubt about it. Ray tracing, all the new stuff that's being introduced with next gen. Cool. Okay. But for me, like for instance, again, to keep bringing it back to the geek culture, um, with Spider Man coming out, they're going to have the fidelity mode and the performance mode. Fidelity mode provides you the 4K, you know, full on experience with ray tracing, visual improvements, but performance, pro performance mode provides you 4K 60 FPS. For me, when I, I, I want to try fidelity mode just to see ray tracing, just see what it looks like. But when the chips are down, if I am getting on just to whatever, swing around for an hour in Spider Man, I'm playing on performance mode. I want mm -hmm. it to be 60 FPS. Yeah. I want it to feel as good and as smooth and as fluid in gameplay more than anything. And, and Ophelia is absolutely right. A game can look so pretty, but have a terrible story, have bad gameplay, and it'll fall flat because of that. But a game could also look not great, but have an amazing story and really engaging gameplay, and it'll get tens across the board. Yeah, I think we all agree. You, you, well, publishers and developable well, studios need to spend all their teraflops just making the game fun and enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 